Hi everyone, it's Artis from I'm Carpentry. Today I'm gonna show you how I fit new doors into old linings because that is completely different from fitting obviously new doors into new linings. Uh, but this time it's I think it's 1930 property and usually um, if you can imagine the uh, door linings aren't the best. For instance, here you can see they they got bellies in and all sorts. So you can they got bellies both sides. But I'm gonna show you step by step how I do it, how to get that gap right, how to not under uh, cut door too short, because uh, obviously if you if you got a new door lining then if you can you can always check obviously the level of the head and you don't have to worry about the head but this time uh, and you can just swing the door and then adjust as you go but here unfortunately you can't do that because you might because <coughs> the head usually heads are out as well probably about five six million normal circumstances sometimes a lot more uh, but obviously if it's a lot more you're gonna see it um, so is uh, the um, door, door uh, lining side where you hinge the door, not always uh, plumb uh, and that could throw the door out. So that's why what I do, I'll show you what I do. I basically, what we're gonna have to do is cut the door to fit the opening uh, and cut it a bit at a time. You can't, you know, you can't cut door. Uh, usually, if it's a new lining, I would cut door five mil smaller, four or five hinges, four or four inch uh, hinges, and I would, um, you know, allow say, you know, 10, 10 millimeters for height, and then once you know you're on the floor, uh, so which means you got 13 millimeters in total, shorter than the you know opening. So you could do that generally um, with new doors. You can prepare all that and swing them. And then, you know, if you need to make some minor adjustments, you can adjust the frame because that's the best to fit doors is before it's painted. So you can adjust because obviously, as you know, not all the um, levels are plumb uh, and not all tradesmen trade their tools, unfortunately. So if you haven't done linings yourself, uh, it's uh, bear that in mind that uh, it might not be level quite uh, so but if if uh, it's newly fitted frame and you've got screws which you can you know take out and adjust move the lining slightly then that's not a problem or wedge it if you need to be you know if there's a belly in the middle uh, but uh, with the old ones unfortunately you can't because you know no one wants to decorate full door lining and um, also, what you need to watch is that sometimes the door stops, uh, sometimes they are with the belly, not sometimes, they're quite often with the belly. So what you need to watch uh, is that it might backbind when you put the door on and depending on what doors you put on. Um, so if you had like a cheaper doors on, which are 32, 33 mil and you you know, and client upgrades them to the nice doors, which are 35 mil, then you might have to move all door stops, uh, or at least the back where the hinge is, because um, that will obviously backbind when you sh shut it. But yeah, in general, what I do, uh, usually they are three inch hinges, as you can see here, um, they look you know, those hinge seats look ugly. Not very well made, obviously. Chiseled out, not so nicely. So what I usually use, I use four inch hinges. Uh, I use two of them and then I use the bigger hinge and then I cut it over the, you know, old um, hinge cut. Um, where this hinge is sitting. Also, as you can see here, that, that is quite deep. 
So what you would have to do, you cut it around, well, place it over so it covers it, and then I would pack it with packers, uh, this uh, part where it's lower, and uh, reason being is so when you screw the hinge so it doesn't cripple the hinge because it could bend it and it will and that will change your margins <clears throat> and I use double sided tape plastic packers uh, from the tub and I just use them to um, to pack it so it's a flush fit and you know so I can properly screw the hinges onto the frame <clears throat> so that's another thing I do and I go I've got my stick of truth which is how I do my hinges so I mark the top I allow um, I allow about two millimeters on the head and what that is that mark I put on the top of the door um, no this is a bit, bit further I'll, I'll draw a bit better on because you also need to allow you also need to allow for um, hinges to uh, sag slightly because they over time they will sag um, and also some depends on the manufacturer of the hinge sometimes they sort of move slightly ever so slightly so if you do three mil gap on the top you end up having four which is a bit on the big side so I'd rather have slightly small um, gap on the top then I put my marks, well I check obviously on the lining, put my marks, I can see that that will cover it, so that's good. Then I check the bottom one, so I'm going to have to use, uh, I'm going to have to use the second mark here. Uh, on other door I had to use the mark above that, because the hinge was slightly different place. So you always need to check because they will, you know, very unlikely be in the same position. So once you've done that, next step, next step is to measure the, to measure the opening, which I'm going to do in a second. Uh, and yeah, I will take you through the process, <coughs> how I deal with these older doors. Um, so, because yeah, otherwise, if you if you assume it's even it's hard to use levels because none of the floors are straight in all the houses, and linings aren't straight either. And so yeah, in regards to pricing, obviously, uh, over time you will learn uh, how how long it will take you. So you just price accordingly per hour, really, because it will be it'll cost more to fit. You know, new doors and old linings, then uh, new new doors and new linings because you could swing a lot more doors and new linings. So bear that in mind when you know taking the job on. Uh, and yeah, I hope you're gonna enjoy it, and I catch up with you in a bit. So the first door we're gonna do, well, not first, but the door we're gonna do is this bathroom one. As you can see, uh, well, it's hard to see probably from video, but I can see that this head is slightly lower that's that's okay because what we can do we can first cut the height um, and we're gonna cut it just so it fits in the opening without gaps nothing like that just so it fits in because then we're gonna have to cut the bottom to fit uh, the floor because floor is not level uh, which it won't be in these sort of older houses and same head is not low because if you're gonna cut it say 10 mil smaller then that's already too much because uh, you want a about five millimeters gap on a tile you know uh, tile floor uh, and three mil at the head so that's eight mil so that's why you need to be careful and um, so what I do I get a door which is here, I lay it flat. And now I'm gonna measure all, measure dimensions. <coughs> so measure, take measurements uh, for the height, for the width. <coughs> so 
just to see what we're dealing with. So that is 197.75. That is 197.5. So good, good thing is quite parallel. So that is a good thing. So uh, whatever is here is parallel. But I can see the tiles compared to the Agrippa. If you look here, tiles compared to the Agrippa go slightly down so which makes me think that the floor runs up slightly on the hinge side and the same on the head side um, which is good because technically if your head runs up toward the hinge side it's easier where if you go up go other way up on a, a, a handle side up then what it would create it would create a bigger gap in this corner once you swing the door and no gap there which means you need to allow for it so but that that's why we are cutting the door just big enough so it fits in a hole and then we're going to physically fit the door into the hole into the opening and we're going to mark everywhere all the gaps we need also what i will do second measurement i'll do is i will take the uh, width measurement to check the width because that's another thing when you're gonna fit door in a new door in old lining those it really depends you you might get lucky that it will be parallel but most times there's a belly or something like that in a lining so you've got to be really careful um, not to over plane, otherwise you end up having big gaps, but I yeah, hope you're gonna see, hope this lining is okay, uh, but we'll see, I'll measure it and so it's 765, so this says 765 pretty much would be the measurement, uh, your door is 763, uh, 762, 763, depending on what sort of door you get. In our case it's Howden's one, it's 763. Uh, so basically you need to take a couple millimeters off and that should uh, allow for gap on a hinge side and on a uh, handle side. But we'll check, we'll go lower and check, you know, in four positions. Bottom to middle and top, just to make sure. And then we can also plane it a little bit in if necessary so we can put it inside of the you know opening and then we're gonna mark the gaps so we'll do the top 765 go lower here the seven seven six seven so that shows that there's a belly well you can clearly see there's a belly in a uh, door lining there so this side this side looks flat but this has a belly if you want you can use uh, like a level to put to see if there's a belly or not but uh, I can see there is so I'll just check what we got here this is 76 this bottom measurement is 761 so what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to plane it off a little bit from we're gonna have to play it off literally 300 mil 300 millimeters down also yeah do check better 10 times check than one times carry wrong so I'll show you. So you can see the measurement is six seven six two. Then we go up it's seven six two and where the hinge roughly is it's seven six four. So it's seven six four there. It's 764. So what you want, you want it planing 
somewhere from this area. We put a mark, put the light mark on, measure down, and you know that your plant edge needs to be at uh, 380 from the bottom of the door. So, firstly, we're gonna. Firstly, we are going to. Um, I'm going to cut the length of the door off and I'll just remind myself what it was. It says 1973. Uh, well, the actual size was 1975, so you're just going to cut a couple of mil shorter so we can get it in opening. done that then next thing for us is to choose the hinge side um, which will be opposite side so we're gonna plan this edge off so 38 up we're literally doing it so we can get it in a door opening so we can offer the door on. Now we're going to take the door. And try to offer it in a position. Also, what you will need, you need a, a palm bag, wind bag, call it whatever you want. I use that and that's basically later there when you start fitting the door in a jam or opening door lining whatever you like and that is to and um, that is to uh, pump it you know to lift it up and it saves the edge of the door because the old days we used to use hand and a chisel and that you know most likely it would bug at the edge uh, but now these are great those pumps you can use them so I'll get a door and we operate the position as you can see we've got a gap on the floor that's why I was telling you you don't want to don't want to cut it all the way so we're gonna have to cut this Put your pencil and then a head. So what I've done, I pushed door against this side. As you can see the gap is bigger there, and that is because the door, uh, the floor is slightly running down, so. Obviously, it wants to lean away. So, what you need to do is push against that side, and then put the mark uh, on a on a door frame with the top of our mark where the top of our uh, door is, just to see how much we need to trim that top off so it fits in a in an opening. Now you can see it fits in the opening just about. Also, what we can notice that we're going to need to plan a bit more door off. As you can see, there's pretty much no gap at the bottom. So is the um, so is the uh, gap here on the top. So that will have to be planned in. Again, you measure down because you don't want to over plan it. 
So you measure down or mark it and the doorway starts getting bigger. So this goes somewhere here. Then we know that it's all the way up there. Same, it starts from here. So I just make sure that I don't take too much of here. Let me check this side. So as you can see, there's a far right four to five mil gap, which is good. It's not too much. Um, so if you want to help yourself by holding the door in a position, you can put a little wedge so you can wedge it back and then you don't have to hold it. But I can see that we already gonna have to gonna have to play in this area still more. Which is fine. Uh, and the very top as well, slightly. Because you want, well now roughly you want about five millimeter gap. Door needs to be five millimeters smaller than your opening on the width um, and then gaps. Depending again on the hinge, but on average, sometimes six. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the head is good. And so we'll wipe off, no big deal. So that's wiped off. So now we measure the um, mounted bottom. Just make sure the door doesn't, as you can see, as you can see we got a gap there. And then it goes up, as I said, the floor runs up obviously. Um, so what we do, we put a pencil, which is about the gap you want on the floor, for four mil. We mark, and hope, hopefully that will be enough, because we don't really know what is going to be when we actually get, you know, when we swing the door open. It might be okay, but, you know, we don't know. So, we're gonna find that out when we actually get it uh, fitted on. So that's gonna be our next task. Once we cut the bottom there, we're gonna cut hinges in, in the door, and also we're gonna cut it there in, on the lining. And then we're gonna swing it, and we'll see where we're at um, at that point, and what else we need to you know, uh, adjust to get it fit, so that's our next step. So now we can seal the door. Bef before we actually cut in hinges and do a planing because that will let the glue dry by the time we're done. You only want a thin coat just the moisture in the bathroom. Uh, it need, you know, you don't want to, don't want to get in the outside the door. So always seal the underside of the door, especially bathroom. Bedroom doors not so much, but bathroom, shower, toilet, I would say even. I always do it, it won't harm because no one's going to take the door off the hinges to get it um, painted on the bottom, so that's not going to happen. So that's why you want to do it. So that's done. Now we're going to plane off the door slightly.
see behind there this big hollow um, space. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to put a, we're gonna have to put packer. We cut it so it sits in there. Then I take double sided tape. which we're going to do to make to close this gap in a little bit that is a bit too much I would say we want to be something like that and then if you look here gap is tight too small so that's what we can do and reason being is because as I said if you saw the old holes um, uh, obviously that's what made it like that because um, even though we pack it, you know, pack it squash slightly, so we need to add some more. But you know, it's getting there. We can see that we're gonna have to plan this section in. Because as soon as we move it, it will run. So we'll do that before we do move anything. Uh, so yeah. That is getting there. Then it will be a little bit there to plane. We can do that by hand planer. Um, so we'll plane this, and and then I'll pack the hinges out again. But as you can see, the gap gap on the top is good. It's even. So, and the bottom one is that's what you want about four or five mil continuous gap. So, those gaps are fine. The only thing we need to adjust is the front gap and this side of the door. So, I was thinking that maybe this would do the trick. Good, so which means it's not gonna back bind anyway. Same on a handle size and on a door on the other side of the door. So I will now repeat that process on the last door, and then I'll be fitting the uh, door handles when I'm gonna catch up with you and we go through what we've done. So hope you're enjoying it, and I'll catch up with you in a bit. So I have uh, fitted the last door.
Gaps are okay. Considering also the state of the uh, linings, so all over the place. So now uh, we're going to start fitting the locks and latches. Uh, she's basically that this part is now different to to one which you do with a normal, you know, new doors, new lining. Same thing. You measure center. Make sure a customer wants it some same place. Sometimes customer wants a different place. Well, these doors not so much, but sometimes you got panel doors. A customer wants lock in the middle of the panel, the crossbar, and because this all vertical, then this doesn't really matter. So in our case, we're going to go on existing. Also, what I wanted to tell. Uh, tell you before I forget is if you are doing fire doors don't use plastic packers to pack hinges only use insumission strips so you can add these to pack out the you know the uh, old um, hinge cut out if it's a deeper one so it comes with with the uh, pre-glued one side so basically even easier, you don't need a double sided tape. Um, so, yeah, that is what I wanted to tell you. Don't forget, on fire doors, you're not allowed to use plastic packers, but you're gonna have to use insumission pads under hinges uh, and to pack it as well. Use them, obviously, you're gonna need a bit more of them because they're only thin, but that's uh, that's the only thing you can't do. Because obviously plastic will melt uh, in case of fire and if they you know and they specify fire fire hinges and fire doors then use only uh, insumission pads. So now we get back on to fitting the uh, latches. So, um, handle fitted with the latch, um, also the plate went in an old place, so uh, all shots tested, there's a little rattle for the paint which you want, so yeah, I think that's the result. And I just need to repeat that another three times and you know, this job will be done. So I hope you enjoy this uh, video uh, and I'll catch up with you soon.